Hey, what's up? This is Scout with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be talking about customizing WordPress. So we're going to take our previous knowledge that we learned with WordPress before, and we're going to take it further to now where you're actually going to be working in some code. Now, don't worry if you've never worked in code like PHP or CSS or anything like that, we're going to make it really easy. What we're not going to do is we're not going to teach you PHP and we're not going to teach you CSS. However, we have CSS videos to watch that you can apply to this and you will acquire WordPress specific PHP and even some general PHP knowledge just from uh, having to modify templates and writing your own. So don't worry if you don't have experience, we're going to make it nice and easy for you. We're also going to cover pretty much everything that you would need to know to learn how to get into it and to get better and advance your skills. So what we're going to get into first is customizing your site by creating a theme. Now we're not going to be creating a theme from scratch in these first few videos. We're going to be creating a child theme. Now. That's actually a mistake that people make when they first start using uh, WordPress or other systems is that they get in here and they wanna make a modification to this theme. So what they do is they come into the themes files and they start modifying those files directly. Now there's a big problem with this and the big problem is, is that WordPress, uh, these themes and themes you download from other places, they might be in flux, right? These, these themes, can be updated just like WordPress itself. And if you go ahead and make a modification to a theme and then you update it, your updates are going to get overridden. And so that's a big problem. Um, in fact, we don't want that at all. We want to make a child theme because we're gonna do things the right way. So at first, we're going to make a child theme for this 2014 theme, and then we're going to get into some more advanced things because what's great about WordPress and the community around it is that people have made some really excellent parent themes that are built for exactly this purpose, customizing, and they even have ones that are completely stark but give you all sorts of features to build your site like you absolutely need to build it. That way, you can make it to be whatever you want, or if you just want to make some modifications to a theme, then you can do that with these. So for this first video, all we're going to do is create our child theme. And then as we go piece by piece and modifying it, you're going to learn about the different components of a theme. And then we're going to move that into more advanced topics. And then we're eventually going to be writing our own theme. From there, we're going to be doing even more advanced things like completely modifying the loop and modifying the templates themselves. And then uh, we're going to get into actually writing, you know, plugins and all sorts of complex stuff. So uh, this is the first video in customizing WordPress and let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our site in a text editor. I have my WordPress folder here with the contents of my site, and I'm actually going to throw it into Sublime Text 3. Uh, I encourage you to use whatever text editor you're most comfortable with. I prefer Sublime Text 3, although there's a new Adam.io that GitHub just sort of teased the past couple of days that I'm pretty excited about too. Uh, and when that comes out, I'm definitely going to have to uh, not only dive in, but make some videos on it. Uh, but for now, I love Sublime Text 3 and I'm gonna continue using it. So we have our site here and I've opened up the site as a project here and you'll notice we have some files. Now our themes files are located within WP content and then themes and we have our four or three themes here. Now we're gonna go over in detail WordPress's file system later on, but everything you need to know is, uh, like we said, don't modify default themes and don't modify themes and make a child theme. That holds true with WordPress. Don't modify the core files. If you wanna make a modification and you think, oh, well, okay, the perfect place to do it is in, you know, one of these files I found maybe in, I don't know, I found, I found basically a modification that I want to make. Well, there's always going to be a better way to make that modification and modifying the core files is not the way to do it. So do not hack the core files. Uh, pretty much anybody who's working in these systems will tell you that. I mean, the same thing's even true for like Drupal or any of these systems. They all have a way where you can override 
the defaults. What we're going to do first is create a new folder. In Sublime Text, I can just right click on the themes folder and go new folder. Um, otherwise, you can do this in Finder or something like that. The folder is going to be within themes, but outside of any of our themes individually. Now, what you're going to want to do is name this after the parent theme and then hyphen child. Now you can even add a hyphen in the, the name of your site, uh, just in case you're moving this around to another site or something just as a signifier. But uh, for now, we can just say 2014 hyphen child, just like that. And when I hit enter here, it creates this new folder. Okay, so now we have our folder here and you'll notice there's nothing in it. Well, we need to make a style.css file, and this CSS file is going to contain all of our style overrides. These are gonna be the styles that get added to the site after the 2014. So it allows us to make our modifications while keeping the 2014 styles. So we're gonna right click on our 2014 hyphen child and select new file. Now, when I click Command S or save the file, I'm going to give this a name, and the name is just style.css, just like that. Now, this theme, this CSS file actually needs some information at the top because WordPress is going to look at this information. So we're gonna do a forward slash and an asterisk to make a comment, go to a new line, and we're gonna give this some information. We need to give this a theme name, so, um, name, it's theme name uh, with a colon, and then you're gonna wanna give it a name, so we can call this level up child. And on the next line, we're gonna have theme URI, and now this theme URI is actually just like whatever the URL for your site is. It's not gonna be doing anything crazy, so we can just say WordPress it's just whatever your URL is. Now, next is the description. And this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you just wanna have a brief description about your theme. Okay. Now, the next thing we have is author. And keep in mind, there's a colon after each of these titles. And I'm gonna put my name here. Now we have author URI. Now, this is just the metadata for this theme. Um, we can say HTTP forward slash forward slash. Uh, and this is just my URL for my website. Uh, sorry, it has, I have CSS. This thinks it's a CSS file, so it keeps on wanting to give me like auto completion on it. Okay, great. And now we have template. Now for template here, you're gonna wanna give this the name of the parent theme. So ours is going to be 2014, just like that, just the, the name of it. And then we can give it a version. And the version is just going to be 0 0.1, sure, whatever. Now on the last line, we're just going to have an asterisk and another forward slash ending the comment. Now let's come to our WordPress site. Now that we have that information in there, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and go down to appearance. Now under appearance, we have our 2014 theme right here, but you'll notice we also have our level up child theme. Now this appears here because of the information that we put in to our CSS file. In fact, uh, if we click on this, it's actually going to have by Scott Chlinsky with a link to my website, the version, it's gonna have the description, and it's gonna tell us that it's a child theme of 2014. So already you can see this starting to take shape. If we click activate, our new theme is going to be activated. Now let's come to our site. Upon refresh, you're gonna see something maybe a little frightening. All of our styles are gone, right? We just wanted to override. We didn't want to delete everything. So to make this possible, we need to come back to our CSS file
And in our CSS file, we need to import with at import and then space URL. And then in here, inside of quotes, we're gonna say dot dot forward slash and then the parent theme. So our parent theme is 2014 forward slash and then style dot CSS. Now we need to finish that off with a semicolon there. And what this is doing is it's importing the styles from, uh, it's actually importing the uh, style.css file from our 2014 theme. And then therefore any sort of modifications we make after it, let's say we want to say body background, uh, background is equal to blue. If we want to say something like that, then we come to our site. You're going to see that even though this main area showed up as whatever, it showed up as white for a second, we saw a little bit of blue there um, because it's because we have this uh, div ID of page or site has a background of white. But if I were to go ahead and turn that off, you could see it's actually definitely getting our blue override. So from here, we can go ahead and start not only overriding themes or overriding the theme with our CSS, but we can start making other modifications to template files because we're using the theme that is going to override the main theme. So this is the very basics of customizing WordPress. We've created a child theme and we've imported the old styles and we're ready to go making further modifications to customize this theme. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter, or Facebook, or the Level Up Tuts forum. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Bye.